In this update, we're going to be talking about my upcoming winter forecast as it looks to be a memorable one. So we're going to really dive into the details for you and break it down for you right now. So let's start off with the overall Enzo outlook for the last three years. And man, we were coming off a La Nina where those cooler than average temperature anomalies were out here in the Equatorial Pacific. But as we trended through the spring and as we transition into the summer months, in fact, back on June the 8th, that's when we were first classified under an El Nino, and that trend has only continued now with a week trending towards a moderate El Nino. And what does a typical El Nino look like in the winter months? Well, you typically have a much less active polar jet stream where it lifts well to the north and we've got those higher than average temperature anomalies trending further south into the into the pacific northwest and over our north central states but at the same time we have a much more active subtropical jet stream coming on off the pacific that pulls in all that Pacific moisture as cold air presses, you'll have cooler than average temperature anomalies and much wetter conditions across the Southern branch stream, jet stream. But that's a typical El Nino. We all know this really hasn't been just kind of a typical El Nino. I mean, just take a look at the, the latest hurricanes you know, season and with these well above average, if not off the chart temperature anomalies so far we've got 15 storms in the middle of september folks and we still got two and a half months left and it's really the culprit of that has just been these off the chart temperature anomalies and i think that's actually still going to be playing a key role especially as we get into the winter months because you can see these higher than average temperature anomalies are uh, you know off the off the coastline here and as cold air presses that will actually feed more water vapor inland and produce those big time snowstorms as well across the eastern seaboard and even in the gulf of mexico is on fire and it's one of those years folks i think even as far south as the i-10 corridor could see a blanket of snow this season so if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns hit the subscribe button and you're in you get all my daily content on this channel and i would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of the month and you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily content so let's really break down the details for you and take a look at the enzo this is where we're currently at a 1.1 that is moderate criteria and take you back all the way through 1950 just the last couple el ninos we'd have to go back all the way to 2015 was our last stronger type el nino as well as back in 2009 back in 2002 time frame all the way back in 1997 98 time frame and what do those years look like so currently here's where we are right now and we're we were in a weak el nino and now we're actually trending into borderline moderate el nino criteria and then the last el nino we'd have to go back a ways right 2015 well that was actually a very strong el nino at least it peaked out at that and then once you went into 2009 2009 El Nino was a moderate trending towards a strong El Nino. And then back in 2002, that actually ended up being from a moderate to a borderline strong El Nino. And then all the way back in 97, 98 timeframe, that ended up off the chart, folks. That was off the chart, well above average, almost in line to 2015 very strong el nino so what is this el nino going to be ending up as so right now we are currently in a kind of a borderline moderate el nino right so if you take all the models right if we piece them all together you know once we hit into the winter months november through january time frame we're expected to be about a 1.5 and that's trending towards a moderate to if not almost strong el nino so we're currently and a moderate transitioning as we get deeper into the winter months, a strong El Nino. And so what does that typically look like? So here's the breakdown from a weak El Nino episodes to a moderate to strong El Nino episodes. 
and the time frame. So typically, once you transition into a moderate to strong El Nino episode into those November through January months, you have that less active polar jet, right? You got polar, you know, warmer than average temperature anomalies across the north and across the Great Lakes and across portions of the northeast while you have a well above average, you know, you know precipitation anomalies and below average temperatures across the deep south with a which are more active subtropical jet and as we get actually deeper into winter right this this actual setup actually gets a little bit more pronounced and by the time we hit into the heart of winter especially across the deep south back into texas into new mexico across the southeast and even into florida Yes, look at those darker blues, folks. That's when you hit those well below average temperature anomalies. And that trend actually continues from your February through your April timeframe. But you notice to the north, it's not as intense, right? So it's intense a little bit. The, the, the higher than temperature anomalies are up front, but less intense on the back half of winter. And take a look at the overall precipitation anomalies. And here's the trend with a much more active subtropical jet. So as this gets more prevalent, we'll have wetter than average conditions trending back into Texas and Oklahoma, across Louisiana and across portions of the Southeast, into Florida and really kind of really up the East Coast, right? We'll have taken advantage of those well above average temperature anomalies, sea surface anomalies off the coast. And as cold air presses in, you'll have likely some big time snowstorms up the Eastern seaboard this year. And that trend just kind of continues as we get deeper into that into those winter months. So let's take a look at going forward because we're already seeing a little bit of a transition towards, towards winter, even going into next month. So taking a look at the Arctic Oscillation, this is one of the teleconnections, folks. And as we trend towards the middle of October, look at that massive dip. That's a negative five deviation. That is a significant drop, not only into the Arctic Oscillation, but also the NAO, which is your North, North Atlantic Oscillation. Both of those two teleconnections take a significant dip by the time we get into the middle of the month time frame in October. And ironically, the latest update from the CFS on your, your, the daily guidance, man, look at that massive outbreak of cold air filtering in. And those are well below average temperature anomalies for that time of year. If that actually came to fruition, we're talking 20, 25 degrees below average with a significant plunge in temperatures is both of those connections those teleconnections take a deep dive and obviously if that came to fruition we could be looking at some early snow across some regions as well so i wouldn't take this verbatim but even already we're starting to see that transition right we're starting to see that transition to our first hint of a first full cold arc you know cold, cold blast for fall and even some winter like conditions with even some areas possibly even getting some early snow with that type of you know arctic type outbreak for early on in the season but let's transition into november because if we take a look at those those last el ninos right 2015 2016 uh 2009 10 2002 Back in 97, 98, those El, Ni those El Ninos, and we kind of pieced them all together. We kind of put them all together. This is what we came up with. So you would have back in, in going into November, we would have above average temperature anomalies for our for our areas in the Pacific Northwest and our car across our North Central states. And then uh, the more active subtropical jet will start to come alive and we'll start to have below average temperature start to trend into portions of the of the deep south, getting into Arizona, across New Mexico and across Texas as well. And then we'll also have another pocket of cool air, colder air across the Ohio Valley trending into the mid-Atlantic and also down portions into the southeast and i think that just gets per, more pronounced you know as we get out of more of a moderate trending towards more of a strong moderate to strong el nino going into december officially starting winter we're going to start to see some 
well below average temperature anomalies trending further south into the deep south across the southern plains especially into texas across the southeast as well as cold air will continue to keep pressing further south and look at january folks that was pretty cold we're talking overall temperature anomalies of two to four degrees celsius that's a good six degrees below average overall for the entire month so january looks overall very cold across the u.s and that was your that's your january outlook and if we even you, you trend going into february that's that's a cold month as well so we'll we'll likely be you know coming out of a moderate el nino trending more likely into a strong peaking times by then and by then that time frame we'll start to have a lot less active polar jet where you'll have those above average temperature anomalies really filtered in across Canada, across the Pacific Northwest, across those regions in our north, north central states, into the Midwest regions, into the Ohio Valley, back into the Mid-Atlantic, as well as in portions of the Northeast. And then the subtropical jet stream will be even the most pronounced with likely some snowstorms across the deep south, across this region. So. Let's break it down, right? Now, one of my favorite analogs between all of those that I mentioned is going to be 2009, 2010 timeframe. I think that's where it fits the most, the, the best out of what I think's to come for this upcoming winter. Remember, it was borderline, it was moderate to borderline strong El Nino back then. And we had some big time snowstorms, especially across the deep south. Just for example, here's here's back into Texas in the Dallas Fort Worth area. They actually had one of their biggest snowstorms ever back then. And that season was a blockbuster season. Some areas ended up with 20 inches of snowfall across that region, but those well below average temperatures across those regions and much more active subtropical jet. And if we look at that analog back in 2009, I think this one fits winter the most, right? And I, you know, don't take this, the overall snow amounts verbatim, but I like the placement of the snow. So overall, a lot of people are gonna be, if you like snow this winter, a lot of people are gonna be happy campers, especially across the South where you typically don't see snow every single year. So it's gonna be one of those years that you're likely end up with about 90 percent of the u.s actually seeing some sort of snow this year and it is one of those years with a much more active subtropical jet as cold air will continue to press we'll have a lot more overrunning conditions and that i think that cold air i think it's just one of those years even down as far south as the i-10 corridor you're likely to get snow. So yes, we're talking places into Houston, into Louisiana, back into Mississippi and Alabama, even the Florida Panhandle likely gets into the action. One of those years that Georgia and South Carolina, these are areas that likely doesn't really see snow every single year. And it is one of those years, I think you'll see at least a little bit of snow but look at the northeast folks i think it's going to be a pretty good active snowstorms this this winter because we're going to have a much more pronounced you know cross polar jet coming coming in we'll have those well above average temperature anomalies off the coastline here like i showed you and with the cold air winning that's going to feed that water vapor inland so that should set up some pretty good snowstorms if not some blizzard conditions at times across these areas in the northeast getting into the mid-Atlantic states, where I think you'll have a lot less snow this year is up further north across the northern and central states, across portions of Montana, into the Dakotas, into Minnesota areas. And then you'll have those, that, uh, that cross-polar flow. So you'll have, a, you know, again, a much more active you know, Pacific jet stream as cold air will continue to press. So it'll be pretty snowy across the Pacific Northwest, getting into even portions of the Southwest here, especially in the higher elevations into Flagstaff region, into New Mexico. This will cross over into you know, the, the, the Southern Plains and to Kansas and to Oklahoma. And I think Texas is one of those one of those time frames. You'll have those well above average precipitation coming back, but then that will feed into some well above average snow totals across these regions. And that feeds into the Southeast as well. But it also comes with some ice. So if you break down all, all the temperature anomalies over the over winter with all those analogs and kind of break it down from November to March. This is 
probably what it would look like, right? So this was back in 2009. So, but I think it still, you know, takes heed of what's gonna might look to unfold this winter. So if you break it down for you, you got this, you got the most more, sub, you know, so the Southern Plains back into the Southeast and across portions of, you know, a good part of the Southeast, even into Florida gets into the action of those well below average uh, temperature anomalies. It's just gonna be further North across the Pacific Northwest, across the North Central States, feeding into Minnesota to across the Great Lakes and even into Maine this year. So overall, I think you'll still have a snowy winter, but you'll have warmer than average temperature anomalies on the front end and then also uh, kind of on the back end, but that middle part is where you'll be cooler than average. And then overall that will bring those well above average snow, snow totals for those regions. And it also comes in the form of ice. So we're gonna have, whenever you see, you know, a less active polar jet, those higher than temperature anomalies, you'll have warm air pressing south, cold air pressing north. You'll have those overrunning conditions. And unfortunately, that will create big time ice storms this year. So that could be widespread across a good part of the Southern Plains, across the Southeast, across the, across the North Central States, into the Midwest, as well as into the Mid-Atlantic. So all those areas are gonna be susceptible for those overrunning type setups with big, you know, snowstorms, but also big time ice producing storms. And yes, if you take you back, that's gonna cause significant damage. This is one of the, third greatest ice storms of all time back in that 2009 time frame. So unfortunately, you're likely gonna be seeing scenes like this as we get deeper you know, into the winter months. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update, why I protect you before and after storm.